Good afternoon, Science 20s. Our lesson today is rather straightforward. We're going to distinguish between three different types of hydrocarbons, something called an alkane, something called an alkene, and something called an alkyne. So first of all, we have to ask ourselves, what is a hydrocarbon? Like the word says, hydrocarbon, a hydrocarbon is an organic molecule that contains only hydrogens and carbons. So there are hundreds of examples out there. I have chosen just three to put onto this page. If we look at their structural formulas, you will see it's made up of only carbons and hydrogens, carbons and hydrogens, carbons and hydrogens. When we take a look at this, C4H10, C2H4, C2H2, again, only made up of carbon and hydrogens. It doesn't matter if they have single bonds, double bonds, or a triple bond. Hydrocarbons contain only hydrogens and carbons. Now, there's going to be three types of pictures that we, we can represent organic compounds with. A structural diagram, which does not normally contain these colored circles. However, I use them to kind of go through the rest of these and show some things. So again, we already know carbon makes four bonds. So this carbon has made a bond with the carbon next to it. So it needs three hydrogens. This carbon's made a bond to the left and to the right. So it needs two hydrogens to get to four. This carbon's made a bond to the left and to the right. So it needs two hydrogens to make four bonds. And this carbon's made one bond to the carbon. So it needs three hydrogens. As we can see then, we can shorten this up so it's not doesn't take up as much room by starting with, hey, this first carbon has bonded to three hydrogens, CH3. The next two carbons, the ones in green, have each bonded to only two hydrogens, so CH2, CH2. And then the last one has bonded to three hydrogens, so we could call this CH3. The last way we can do this is a line structure. And line structure is probably my favorite, although it takes a second to catch on. For a line structure, the rule is anywhere we start the line, end the line, or anywhere we change direction, those represent carbons. So this structure has one, two, three, four carbons, like all the examples we're all doing, C4H10 here. And again, because this carbon's only made one bond, we know that there uh, is three hydrogens on this guy. Since this guy has only made two bonds, we know there's two hydrogens on this guy. Because this guy's only made two bonds, we know there's two hydrogens on this guy. And because this guy has only made one bond, we know that this one has three hydrogens on him. So again, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. Remembering the key always to this is carbon only makes four bonds, but it must make four bonds. Now, I'm going to clear this. Now, what I would like to do is let's look at the three types of hydrocarbons. So, hydrocarbon type number one, we're going to look at alkanes. Alkanes contain only single bonds. So, if I was to draw something that was an alkane, We're going to put little ticks in for hydrogen. So right, carbon has to make four bonds. It's made one bond to carbon, so it's going to have three more hydrogens. This guy's made one bond to carbon. He's going to have three more hydrogens. So you will see, when I look at this, he's made up of two carbons and one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. Well, that's going to make sense, and we're going to call this saturated. The reason it's saturated is these carbons have the maximum number of bonds possible. They are bonded to the maximum number of hydrogens they can. They are full. Every carbon makes four bonds and they are full. So we are going to call that an alkane. It is going to be called saturated. It can accept no more hydrogens. We always end alkanes, like the word says, with an A. N E ending. So all types of alkanes, and we have a list here of about 10 of them. Methane, ethane, propane, butane. You're going to notice a 
alkanes always end with an ane ending. The other thing that's important for alkanes is we always know how many hydrogens they have because no matter how many carbons something has, it's always got twice as many plus two hydrogens. So when I look at this and I go, ooh, two carbons, it has two carbons. Therefore, if it's an alkane, it will have twice as many carbons as hydrogens as the carbon. So instead of two, it'll be have four, double it, plus we'll have another two. So this example here is exactly what ethane is. Well, let's try another one. Let's pretend we have an alkane and we have four carbons in it. Without having to draw it, we can look at this and we can go, well, alkanes have twice as many plus two hydrogens. So twice as many carbons would be, four would be eight. And we have to add an additional two. So this would be C4H10 twice as many plus two. And again, this would be my example of butane right here. Well, let's take a look at this then on a new sheet of paper. And let's try a couple examples of this. So I'm going to pick, I don't know, let's do this guy. One, two, three, four, five. We know it has five carbons. We know it also has only single, single bonds. And remember, for every carbon, you have to make four bonds. So he's got to make more. He's got to make more, two more, two more, two more, three more. So we still have five carbons. But without having to count all these hydrogens, because we know it's an alkane, twice as many would be 10, plus two more would be 12. Just for that fact, let's add them up. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Hey, the system works. Let's try this again, but this time let's draw our five in a different shape. So we have five carbons again, so C5. And because they're all singly bonded, again, I'm gonna put all the little tick marks in here. we would say, hey, five carbons means we're gonna have twice as many plus two, still gonna have 12 hydrogens. Well, let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Alkanes, twice as many plus two. Another way we could see this is, again, if they just gave us the name of something, so they could call something 2-methyl, propane. It ends with an ane, therefore we know this is an alkane. Okay, Ends with ane, ending A-N-E, alkane. All single, single bonds, alkane. Twice as many plus two hydrogens, alkane. And we should do one line structure just so we get used to seeing them. So when we go to do this, I'm going to change my pen color this time. We have a carbon here, and 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 a carbon there, and a carbon here. Remember, everywhere we start, stop, or change direction. Well, in this example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. So if we follow our logic to figure out the number of hydrogens, because everything is single bonded, we would have twice as many, which is 14, plus two more. C7H16. Just for fun, C7H16. Let's go back and check our chart. C7H16. Perfect. We must be figuring out things correctly then. Okay. Besides alkenes, we also have alkenes. Alkenes end with an E and E ending. That E ending tells us there's a double bond. Now, because there's a double bond, and so I'm going to put it in here. So, two carbons with a double bond. Remember, every carbon has to make four bonds. So, this carbon's already made two. So, he only has two bonds left. 
This carbon's already made two. He only has two bonds left. So when we put the hydrogens on here, you'll notice he's very different than an alkane. So when we add up the two carbons, wonderful. But this time, notice the pattern has changed. Cn equals H2n. So take the number of carbons and double it for the number of hydrogens. So when we have two carbons, we're going to have only four hydrogens. One, two, three, four. And this pattern's going to work all the time. And that's what we see here. Again, when I'm seeing an example of alkenes, they all are going to end with this ene ending. But more importantly than that is when we go to do these, right, when we started with an alkane, well, the only way for us to turn this into an alkene is get rid of a bond on each of these and have them come down and we'll make a double bond. So now he's made four bonds. We'll notice that this guy goes away. So the reason why the formula is different for an alkene than an alkane is instead of CnH2n plus 2, we get rid of the plus 2 because to make a double bond, these single bonds come down. We lose a hydrogen off each of the carbons, and when it comes down, it makes another bond. So I didn't need those hydrogens anymore. Now, anytime we have a multiple bond, we will call this unsaturated because ideally, if we got rid of this bond, we could add a hydrogen to both of these sides, to the left side of the double bond and the right side, and we could get rid of the double bond. So anytime there's a multiple bond, we call this unsaturated. So again, what I would like to do is, let's go to the next page. I'm going to make up some examples for us. So this time, what I would like to do is, let's draw the same five carbon shape back. But this time, let's put a double bond in there. So this is still C5, but because there's now a double bond, because this is unsaturated, we know that it's got only twice as many hydrogens. Now let's prove that to ourselves. So let's grab a lighter pen so we can count them as I do them. Let's put on the hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five. It's already made three bonds, so six already made three bonds. So seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. Now the question is, if I change the shape of this, would it still work that way? So one, two, three, four. I'm going to put my little branch there, and I'm going to put a double bond back on this thing. Again, when I go to look at this, it's still one, two, three, four, five carbons. So let's put my hydrogens on. Well, this guy's made two bonds, so he only gets two more. So that's one, two. This guy's made three bonds, so he only gets one. So three, three bonds, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So again, twice as many in a double bond we will be looking at less hydrogens by two. Now, I could name one of these, and I'm just going to pull a random name of an alkene. 3,4-dimethyl, and we're not going to worry about the naming. Oct-2-ene. Again, the key is it ended with ene. Because it ended with ene, that means for sure it's an alkene. Again, let's do a little line structure. Anytime I see a start or a stop, I'm going to put a carbon, a carbon, a carbon, a carbon. This guy has four carbons. Because it's got a double bond, we're going to say it's got twice as many hydrogens. Again, if we wanted to count them out, we could. This guy's only made one bond, so one, two, three. He's made two bonds, four, five. He's made three bonds, six. And he's made two bonds, seven, eight. Again, perfect for an alkene. Last but not least, let's look at an alkyne. 
Alkynes are hydrocarbons that contain a triple bond. So these are the examples where we have a carbon and it's not bonded to a carbon with one bond or two bonds, it's bonded with three bonds. So this carbon has already made three out of the four bonds. So it only gets one more. This carbon has made three out of the four bonds. So it only gets one more. So when I go to draw this, the general formula gets very, very different. So I have two carbons in my example. So to figure out hydrogens, double my number of carbons. So two times two is four, and then subtract two. I only have actually two hydrogens. And we can see that example right here. Notice the ending always when there's a multiple bond of a triple is ein, 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 Y-N-E ending. We would also call these unsaturated because again, there's a multiple bond. This guy could easily take another hydrogen on both sides, break to a double, take another hydrogen on both sides, break to a single. So what I would like to do is same as we've done on the previous slides. We're going to go to the next page and we're going to try an example of this. So again, let's try five carbons in a row. But this time, let's put a triple bond in there here. Now, as we put the hydrogens in, we should count this up. So we currently have five carbons. There's already made three bonds, so he gets one. This guy's already made three and another one, four. He doesn't get any hydrogens. This guy's made two, so he gets two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, let's test out our theory here. Twice as many hydrogen, so five times two is 10, minus two, eight. Okay, we're gonna try this again. This time we're gonna put a bend in it. One, two, three, four. There's my fifth. Again, I'm gonna put my triple bond back here. We're gonna put in our hydrogens in as we do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's made four bonds. He's only made three. Eight, C5H8, twice as many minus two. So for every time we get rid of a bond and we put in a double bond or we get rid of two hydrogens, we put in a multiple bond. When we go from an alkane to an alkene, we lose two hydrogens. When we go from an alkene to an alkyne, we lose another two hydrogens. Again, I'm gonna just pick a random name of an alkyne. Three ethyl X two. Ein. Again, we see the ending ein. We know this is an alkyne. I could again put in some sort of structure here. Again, when I look at this guy everywhere I start or in the middles or where I end, these would all be ca carbons. So I have six carbons here. My hydrogens, again, without counting them, twice as many would be 12, minus two would be 10. Let's just for fun put them in. One, two, three. This guy's made three bonds. Four, five, six, seven. He's made four bonds. He's made four bonds. Eight, nine, 10. So twice as many hydrogens minus two. Now, let's compare these three, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. First of all, the easy way to remember, how do you remember who's the single, who's the double, who's the triple? It goes alphabetically, ain, ain, ain. So alphabetically, single is ain, double right here is ain, triple is ain. Remember, if you're single bonded, you are considered saturated because you can accept no more hydrogens. Double and triple bonds, you certainly could add a hydrogen to both sides, lose the double bond. Add a hydrogen to both sides, lose the triple bond down to a double. Add another two hydrogens, lose the double bond down to a single. Here are your formulas again. Twice as many plus two. Twice as many. Twice as many minus two. Ain, ain, ain. The exercise I would like us to do before we're done here is 
can we decide who's an alkane, who's an alkene, who's an alkyne? If it was me, I would pause the video, try, figure this out for yourself, and then unpause the video to check your answers. If I take a look at this one, all single bonds, this is going to be an alkane. C6H14, twice as many plus two. This is also going to be an alkane. Ooh, triple bond. Alkyne. Pentane and aning will be an alkane. Double bond. This makes this an alkene. Ene ending makes this an alkene. Ooh, triple bond. That makes this an alkyne. Double bond. That makes this an alkene. C3H4, so twice as many would be six. Minus two is four, so this would also be an alkyne. And last but not least, all single bonds, this would be an alkane. Hope this makes the vocabulary a little bit easier.